Hi guys, it's Andrew here from smartgardenguide.com. If you've been having difficulty looking after your calatheas and keeping them in great shape, this is the video that's gonna help you. I'm gonna share all my top tips for looking after calatheas to keep them looking great, to prevent brown leaf edges, to prevent the leaves turning yellow, to stop overwatering. I'm gonna tell you how much humidity, what temperatures and how much lighting your calatheas are gonna to need to keep them thriving, growing strongly, and so that you get a lot more enjoyment out of looking after your calatheas. So calatheas do have a reputation for being a bit tricky, and that is true. They are a little bit tricky. They're, they're a fair bit more difficult than a lot of other common house plants. But in the grand scheme of house plants, there are plenty of plants that are much more difficult. So really, it's just a matter of getting a few key things right with calatheas, and you'll be absolutely flying. I've got a few of my own calatheas here just to share with you, just to show you the variety that's available within the calathea genus. Uh, I mean, they really are fantastic. There's so many colors and leaf patterns and uh, leaf sizes and shapes and growth habits that, um, you know, I own quite a number of calatheas and certainly it's a genus that I'm going to keep adding, uh, adding more and more to my collection because I really do love them. So I'll just um, go through some of the plants that I have here and we'll chat generally about um, some of the care tips. So the first one I've got here is my Calathea warskewixii and the other name for this is Calathea jungle velvet. So this um, is I think probably one of the only sort of velvet leafed Calatheas. It is in my opinion the most gorgeous Calathea that there is out there. It gets these lovely large um, leaves with this deep green um, leaf surface and then underneath you've got these purple, you know, purple leaf backs. Uh, this is quite a tricky calathea to look after. So all calatheas, they want uh, a good amount of bright indirect light. So you want to put them somewhere where, you know, it, you know, where there's plenty of light in a room, but you want to keep direct sunlight off it. If you get direct sunlight on a calathea for, you know, you know even an hour a day, uh, it will start to cause brown leaf edges and scorch the leaves. So certainly you don't want to leave this in a south facing window or to be honest, even in any window during the summer, you want to leave it um, a little bit back from the window and you want to keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't get too much light. Um, certainly if you do start noticing brown patches on the leaves or big brown leaf edges, lighting is one of the first things to consider. The other side of the coin, if lighting is too low, your calathea won't grow. So watch out for that. You know, if you've got it stuck in a dark corner and it's not putting out new leaves, again, have a think. Um, you know, you can put it somewhere really that seems very bright to you, but as long as it's not getting direct sunlight, that's absolutely fine. So an absolutely lovely one there. And one of my, one of my favorites. Um, actually, that's, um, while we're on that, I'll just show you this thing here. And most calatheas, their new leaves emerge all co coiled up like this, so you can see it tightly curled because calatheas grow from a rhizome, which is a modified stem that's under the ground. So the roots grow down from this rhizome and then the new leaves sprout up. Uh, so they, they almost look like drinking straws when they first emerge from the soil and then they come up and then they slowly unfurl and you get a lovely new leaf. So this plant has been producing a couple of new leaves over the last few months and that's, that's been great. The next one I think we'll look at is this one here. This is a wee uh, small calathea, uh, calathea ornata or pinstripe calathea. This is really widely available. Again, it's probably on the more difficult end of the spectrum in terms of calatheas. There is a bit of variation, you know, the one that we saw before, calathea warsku XCI, it says very difficult. Um, the pinstripe calathea or calathea ornata is um, somewhere in the middle, but possibly towards the more difficult end of the spectrum. Calatheas, the, the other thing that you really want to do to keep them in great shape is humidity. Okay, so if you live in a dry environment, an arid environment, where humidity levels are say less than 40%, your calathea is not going to thrive. So if you can't provide a reasonably humid environment, you probably shouldn't even consider buying a calathea. Just go for houseplants that don't require so much humidity and you'd be so much happier because one of the things I found with houseplants is if you're constantly fighting against the conditions in your home, 
uh, and you're trying to grow a plant that really isn't suitable, it's just a miserable experience. You're much better picking plants that are more suited to your home or adapt the conditions, the conditions in your home um, to the plant that you're growing um, it really well. It'll give you so much more satisfaction. So you want to aim for humidity levels of at least 50% for calatheas. Now, in the summer where I live, that's no problem. Humidity levels are comfortably above 60, maybe 70%. I use a digital humidity meter to keep an eye on humidity levels and uh, particularly in the winter when I've got my central heating on inside uh, this is quite relevant because humidity will quite often dip down below 40 percent and I use a range of measures to increase the humidity level such as grouping the plants together and using a humidifier to make sure that those humidity levels are, are high. Um, even despite this, um, I actually have a couple of calatheas where you, they are getting quite a lot of brown edges and this is my fault. Uh, this year I have been running the central heating more in an effort to keep the temperature up for my houseplants and the consequence of that has been that the humidity levels have dropped faster and further than expected. So although most of my calatheas have been okay, I've got a calathea, I've got a couple of calathea orbifolias which have really struggled. So I've got one back here. Uh, this calathea orbifolia has really been decimated with brown leaf edges and I was just a bit slow on the uptake in terms of seeing the problem. So, you know, it got into sort of start of October, I stopped the central heating on. I thought it was doing a good job by, you know, making the room that these houseplants are in a little bit warmer. But the consequence of that was the humidity levels dropped dramatically. And I would say most of the leaves of this Calathea orbifolia now have brown edges. But at least I know what the problem was. You know, I identified it quickly. I've started running my humidifier more. So I'll not make that mistake again. And I think that's half the battle in terms of houseplant care. If you can actually just, you know, if you know what's happening, you can adapt to it. It's when you see brown leaf edges and you don't know what's going on. You see leaves turning yellow and you're not sure what's actually happening. How can you fix that? And chances are, if you do try and fix it, you'll fix the wrong thing. You'll, you'll end up killing your plant. Um, so that's, that's why I love sort of, you know, uh, you know, really examining my plants very closely and seeing what's going on with them and uh, making some changes and watching how they adapt. So uh, we'll move on to another plant here. This is a Calathea roseopecta medallion. So roseopecta and then the, the uh, cultivar is medallion. Now Calathea roseopecta, there's actually quite a lot of um, cultivars of this. Um, I think because it is a really good looking plant. It's also one of the calatheas that's a little bit easier to look after. So it's less prone to uh, overwatering. It's less prone to leaf problems. And certainly I haven't given this one any particularly special care. And it just seems to have thrived very, very nicely. Uh, so that's um, Roseopecta medallion. And I've also got a wee tiny one here. Uh, this is Roseopecta dotty. And this, well, I've already said War Scarce here was my favourite, but this is probably number two. I, I just love the leaf coloration and the really dark green leaves and the pink accents are amazing. I bought this from a local supermarket and it only had about three leaves. I've probably bought it, probably actually bought it about a year ago now. And well, Initially I brought home and it actually didn't do great um, it just sat and one of the leaves died and it only had two leaves left but I just focused on providing good lighting, keeping the soil mo moist and making sure the humidity levels were good and sure enough last spring it started just producing leaves and it's just produced new leaf after new leaf after new leaf and it's really thriving. So I suppose that brings us on to watering because after lighting and humidity watering is definitely the next most important thing about looking after calatheas. So you can't let calatheas dry out too much and you can't overwater them and they are quite sensitive. Their roots are quite delicate so if you um, if you forget to water this plant and the soil dries out completely again it, lower leaves will start dying it'll start getting brown leaf edges brown leaf tips and you'll destroy the cosmetic look of your plant. 
And that's bad, but if you start watering it properly again, it will grow new leaves and you can revive the plant. So with, with caliphas, generally what I do is I just, I water them thoroughly, soak the soil, let it drain really, really well, and then keep an eye on it every couple of days. And once I feel the top sort of, well, for this plant, actually, because it's in such a small pot, once the surface of the soil dries out, I'll water it again. Uh, some of my caliphas that are in larger pots, uh, I generally sort of leave it until about the top one to two, uh, you know, inches of soil feels dry to the touch. Every plant's a wee bit different. Every caliphate is a bit different. It depends, you know, what pot you're using, what soil you're using, the size of the pot. If you're, one of the worst things actually you can do uh, when you're watering caliphates is plant them in a pot that's too large. So there's a small plant in a larger pot. You water it, the soil gets really wet. It gets a bit soggy. It takes a long time for that soil to dry out. So the plant is exposed to soggy conditions for a long time and you're much more likely to uh, cause your plant to be overwatered and an overwatered plant will often get root, root rot. Uh, this happened to my Calathea zebrina. I knew the soil was a bit heavy. I knew that it was in too large a pot and I didn't do anything about it. I was just pretty careful. It was thriving. It was growing loads of new leaves and just at the point when I was totally happy with it, the leaves just started going a slight tint of yellow all over and my heart sank because I knew uh, it had developed root rot and sure enough it had. Um, so the, the leaves became progressively yellow. I repotted it, checked the roots and two thirds of the roots had rotted and I see that plant didn't survive. So definitely planting in a pot that's too large and over watering um, are some of the worst things that you can do for caliphas. Um, you just want to um, uh, you know, keep the soil lightly moist, but don't overdo it. Um, what I've got now, yeah, this is, uh, I've got another caliphas that's a wee bit, a wee bit different. Uh, this is a caliphas lancifolia, uh, or the rattlesnake plant. I think just because of how it looks, it kind of looks like a bit like a rattlesnake. This one is doing okay. It does have a few, brown spots on the leaves and it's got one leaf that has developed um, sort of a brown edge which isn't great. Interestingly sometimes you get a brown leaf on a or, or a brown edge on a calathea leaf if the leaf comes into contact with another leaf if it's pressing against another leaf and certainly if there's a bit of trauma to that leaf and um, so something that if you have a plant that is actually growing really strongly sometimes the leaves can damage each other and i've noticed this in particular with my calathea warscu xei which is a real shame you know the, the the faster and more impressively it grows the more likely you are to get some of the leaves that'll press against each other and it'll cause these large brown edges or brown patches on the leaves um, I'll actually go on to chat about fertilizing uh, calatheas at this point. So calatheas definitely do benefit from a little bit of fertilizer. Again, you want to tread cautiously. So I fertilize my calatheas from sort of spring through to late summer. So from about March through to the start of September, um, once a month, maybe once every three weeks. I use very little. So I use a balanced uh, water soluble synthetic fertilizer and it's just a general purpose fertilizer with equal amounts of nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus as well as trace or micro uh, nutrients. Um, it is a fertilizer that's designed for all plants outside in and indoors. So the instructions on it say, um, say one thing but basically I ignore them and I make it up to about a quarter to about a half at most of the strength um, recommended for outdoor plants. The reason for this is calatheas are sensitive so if you put too much fertilizer um, on your calatheas again it'll burn the leaf tips, they'll get brown edges, it'll actually damage the roots and then your plant will stop growing and it'll have to spend many months uh, growing new healthy roots before it'll resume new foliage growth. So I just um, add a little bit of fertilizer and fertilize it at the same time as I'm watering it approximately once a month and keep an eye to make sure that uh, you know there's no adverse effects from fertilizing it. Um, the other thing I generally do is about 
couple of times a year, I will flush the soil because all that fertilizer goes into the soil. Some of it's taken up by the plants, but some of it will accumulate in the pot, in the soil. And over time, this can cause toxicity to the roots. So um, as I say, a few times a year, I will take the plant to the sink and I will run loads and loads and loads of water through the pot to flush any excess fertilizer salts out of the pot. And uh, you'll keep it, uh, uh, you'll keep it from building up and uh, causing problems. Um, the interestingly, the the other thing that can cause these brown leaf edges and brown leaf tips is actually the water that you use itself. So you sort of think tap water would be grand. Uh, tap water is absolutely fine for most house plants, but tap water does contain some things that house plants don't like. So. Uh, typically your tap water will contain chlorine and, or chloramines uh, and that's as a sort of disinfectant to make sure that your tap water doesn't uh, contain any bugs that might do humans any harm. It can also contain fluoride and it contain other minerals and heavy metals and whilst these are usually at safe levels for humans they can cause problems for very sensitive plants. Calatheas are one of those plants that is very sensitive to water quality I live in a soft water area, so there aren't an awful lot of minerals in my water. Uh, I generally use water for tap water for calatheas and have no problems whatsoever. But if you if you are getting the watering right and the humidity right and the fertilizing right, if you're doing everything that your calathea wants and you're still getting brown tips and brown edges on the leaves, try changing the type of water. Try changing to uh, uh, rainwater or distilled water and this will eliminate this as a potential cause of problems with your calathea. Um, so I've got a few other ones here. I've got a really tiny, another really tiny calathea here, and this is a calathea macoyana or uh, a peacock plant. And again, this one's called a peacock plant because the leaves kind of look like um, the wings of a peacock, which I think, yeah, I think they do. Uh, it's also called cathedral windows because of the way that if you shine light through the leaf, it sort of looks like a stained glass window, uh, which is really cool. Um, I suppose the next thing to chat about actually is pruning. So calatheas are very low, have very low pruning requirements. Um, really, the only thing you need to do to prune calatheas is uh, sometimes they will, a leaf, oh, actually this one's got one wee leaf that has died off. Um, you just prune them off at the base uh, where they emerge from the soil. So just use sterile pruning shears and cut off any leaves that are damaged or yellow or anything like that. I think I've actually got, yep, yeah, I've got another, um, Calathea orbifolia here, and it has got a wee a yellow leaf. Um, and again, most of the leaves in this Calathea orbifolia are perfectly healthy, but this one here is is dead. And I know this is nothing to worry about. This is not a sign of overwatering because it's just one leaf. This is just acclimation. So it's currently winter here. Light levels are a bit lower, and the plant has decided to get rid of this lower, older leaf, and it's just in the process of um, giving up on the leaf. So what I will do, actually, uh, as part of this video is, I'll just show you a wee clip of me um, cutting it off at the base, what I would normally do. And I think this, this actually, this orbifolia is doing better than my other one. It's not really suffering with the brown edges. They have been growing in the same room, so I'm not 100% sure why this one has been a little bit more resilient. I've got two other calatheas to show you. Um, this one here is a little bit different. This is a calathea mosaica or a calathea network. And this is very interesting because this just has a really unique leaf pattern. It's got this sort of crisscross appearance on the leaves. And again, if light shines through from the back of the leaf. They really are beautiful. Um, I suppose on first glance, Maybe not as impressive as some of the other calatheas that you see, uh, but I I just really uh, really think this one's very interesting. It's definitely a grower. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll discuss actually propagation now. So propagating calatheas is usually very easy. Um, as I say, they grow from a rhizome. So when you repot a calathea, you can divide the rhizome, and I wouldn't divide this one, it's too small. I did divide my orbifolia 
about a year ago and it's getting pretty big again now but basically um you don't want to you don't want to just propagate a calathea whenever you feel like it you generally want to do it whenever they are growing out of their pot because calatheas they don't really like to be repotted they don't like to be they don't like their rhizome to be divided and they can struggle for a wee while after you do this uh, when i uh, repotted my calathea orbifolia it was huge it was thriving it was actually looking a hell of a lot better than it is now and i divided the rhizome and i actually wrote it up as a blog post on my website and it all went really well repotted the two halves into a really good potting mix and took good care of them but it still took months and months of them sitting doing nothing presumably in shock from what had happened to them uh, while they got used to their new surroundings and it was maybe uh, maybe three four months later that they started producing their first new leaf um, but yeah basically uh, in terms of propagating uh, calatheas you just uh, t take them out of the out of the pot remove any of the loose soil and then you can just divide the rhizome largely with your hands actually if you just gently tease the rhizome apart and take two um you know two clumps you know, you can usually separate the plant fairly clearly um you went to you know two or more pieces um you can cut the rhizome if you're getting stuck if it won't just quite tease apart that's absolutely fine and then you just want to repot it in appropriate soil and actually that brings up a good point what soil do you use for calatheas well you want to use something that is both well draining but also retains moisture so i typically use just either a houseplant potting mix or peat or cocoa choir 50 percent of that and 50 percent perlite and um, sometimes it'll go slightly more sometimes it'll go like you know two-thirds potting mix and a third perlite um, but essentially the principle is you want something that does retain a bit of moisture but is light and fluffy like peat or cocoa choir and you want an inorganic drainage amendment uh, such as coarse sand uh, gravel pumice uh, perlite is, which is what i use um, which i i think works very well and uh, you want to make sure that after you've repotted it when you water it the water shouldn't sit on top of the soil it should run through the pot fairly quickly and out the drainage hole, holes within really a few seconds so i think i'll wrap this video up now i just wanted to have a bit of a chat about some of the care tips that i have for looking after calatheas and show you some of my calatheas some of the uh, things that are going well with them some of the things that aren't going quite so well and hopefully help you to keep yours thriving so if you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to the channel and press the like button to let uh, youtube know that you've enjoyed this video and hopefully i'll see you in the next house plant care video all the best bye now